We're going to first of all have um, response, responsive uh, reading by Master Erin Minsa and prayer by Trustee George Hill. Receive Amen. them as they come. Amen. Amen. shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his, uh, yeah, come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be faithful to him and bless his name. For, for the Lord is good. His mercy, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Amen. Good morning, Mount Nebo. day to be alive. Yeah. We're celebrating our 85th church anniversary. Yeah. 85 years. What a blessing. Aren't we blessed? I'm here to do a prayer, so I guess I can cut the preliminaries out. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed will be thy name. Kind Father and kind Lord, we come now sitting and standing between these four walls, pausing quietly along the highway of life, calling on your name. Father, you have allowed us to be here for 85 years with four pastors only. Somebody must be doing something right. Oh God, we come now thanking you for this day. Thanking you for every day for the past 85 years. We thank you for those members that have passed through Mount Nebo. And we had just a short while to sit down and worship God with them. We understand now they are in a house not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Thank you for each member and the families that worship with us. And those that are unable to do so, we ask a special blessing on them. Father, we know you. All right. Because your son came down 40 and two generations after man had surely messed up. We thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you for every member and every member's family and every ministry here at Mount Nebo. Continue to bless us that we might be a beacon light on Adam Clayton Power Jr. Boulevard and 114th Street. We come in each week to worship and go out to serve. But as I stand here now, I was noticing in the program there's been only four pastors over the past 85 years that stood behind this sacred desk. Thank you, Jesus, for those that are ill or a little sick that's a member of Mount Nebo. We pray a special prayer for them this morning. Because we know you are a doctor that has never lost a case. And we just want to thank you during this celebration. And Father, when, when, the, when the man of God comes with the word today, hide him behind this desk that we may see less of him and more of you. Let him reach down into the storehouse and bring up a word for his, for your people. Oh, God bless us now. Keep us and we will be kept. Bless us and we surely will be blessed. And when the benediction is done today, and we go down from this place, let us go down with the heart of love, heart of understanding, and a heart of joy. Kind Father, we ask all these blessings now in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. All right, give the Lord a hand clap of praise, everybody. Come on, you can do that. 
You can do better than that. Bless the Lord this morning. I came, uh, I missed out a little bit on what on the uh, service on yesterday. Is everybody up, Minister Lavanda? You singing? See Aunt Vic in the audience, amen, in the, in the pews over there. Give Aunt Vic a hand because God has blessed her. She was a choir member here for many years. I see a few, a few of them. The song says, if you come to have church, glory to his name. The song says, if you come to have church. Come on, Mount Nebo. The song says, if you come. To have church glory to his name. Put your hands right here. Worthy, he's worthy. 
As we come to this period of memorial, as we remember our fallen comrades in Christ, those whose life's light like a flickering flame in the midst of a blowing wind has gone out and they have heard the steady march of the chariot wheels from the sky coming to exit them out of time into eternity. Time cannot erase, neither can ages destroy their testimony and witness and legacy that they have left behind. And so as we memorialize them today, we want to remember Sister Rosa Kennedy, Brother Jordan Emmanuel Nevis, Sister Ella Harrison, Evangelist Ella Harrison. Brother Charles Coleman. Mother Narcissus Ramsey. Sister Roddy Mitchell. Mother Arnethia Thomas. And Brother James Baxter. Their names and their memory will forever be etched in our minds. They will forever be connected to us. We will forever remain bonded to them, not only during their pilgrimage in time, but we shall see them again on that great getting up morning when the dead in Christ shall rise first and those who are left on this earth shall be caught up and we're going to meet the Lord in the air to go home to be with him the Bible teaches us to weep not as those who have no hope for our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness we will never forget our beloved members who have left a rich legacy for us to continue. Everybody, pray for me.
altar.
grandmother, not my neighbor, not my co-worker, but me, Lord, please don't pass me by. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give up that credit. Let the people of God say amen. amen. Let the people of God say amen again. Amen. We are now prepared to present our mothers uh, to the church. Several weeks ago, possibly a month ago, I went to Reverend Baker and I told her that I wanted to reestablish uh, our mother's ministry, the mother's board, because since the transitioning of Mother Juanita Jackson, who was the long-standing mother of our church, uh, our mother's ministry uh, became inactive, and then we were hit with COVID. Unbeknownst to many of you, uh, unofficially, we look to Mother Anithia Thomas uh, as the mother of the church. We never officially did that, uh, but she knew in her heart uh, that I saw her as the official mother uh, of the church. Uh, and so I'm grateful today uh, because time moves on. And we're all sons and daughters of the graveyard. Uh, we are all on our way to that land beyond the sky, uh, to that place where Job declared, the wicked shall cease from troubling, the weary soul shall be at rest over in that land where the lion lays down with the lamb. But ministry must go on. Ministry must go on. And Jesus has called us to be his disciples. And one of the pillars of the church think uh, is the mother's ministry. And so at this time, I'm going to ask, are we going to present first? Good morning again, my Lebo, and happy 85th church anniversary. Amen. 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 Again, I stand before you and highlight in pastor's vision to consecrate our mothers. As I call your name, Please come forward. Peggy Forney. Amen. Y'all put your hands together. Rayanne Bessie Lou. Amen. Fanny.
seated in the presence of the Lord. The task upon me now is to give charge to the mothers of the church and uh, the charge to the church regarding the mothers. And then we're going to call on our ministers in training to come and they're going to anoint all of our mothers. Somebody, somebody shout, this is major. This is major. Amen. Because it's major because we are honoring, even before Mother's Day, 
Amen. Amen. To those mothers who are standing and to those who are seated uh, this morning as the senior pastor and servant of the Lord Angel of the House here at Mount Ebo Baptist Church. This is not an arduous task, but it is a sacred task for me uh, to be able to um, charge the mothers of the church. And I do so in the words of late Dr. E.K. Bailey uh, with both fear and trepidation uh, because not often do we get an opportunity to offer words or, of advice or to charge uh, the sages of our families. Uh, not just in our biological families, but in our spiritual uh, families. And as I stand here uh, today, uh, my mind goes back down memory lane and I think of all of the sage women in my own many of their offsprings and descendants are watching us live in Texas. I think about my sage aunt who led me to Christ, Aunt Virtus, a.k.a. Torchy. And I remember the scripture that she planted in my heart, Proverbs 3, 6, trust in the Lord, with all of thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding, but all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct and so as it is my sacred duty and joyful duty to charge the mothers uh, today, the first charge that I want to give to you is to be powerful. Yeah. To be powerful. <laughs> be powerful because we have been, as disciples of Christ, we have been endued with power. In Acts 1 and 8, words are recorded and ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you and you shall be my witnesses be powerful be powerful witnesses just being the mothers of the church people who will come in and out of the doors of this church will look up to you uh, because you have been on the journey for some time now and they will look to you for advice they will look for you to be Example. So be powerful. And then secondly, I would admonish you to be prayerful. Yes. Scripture says <laughs> men, and I would add women, should always pray. But because when it comes to the biblical exhortations, uh, gender-wise, it becomes neuter. Uh, in God, there is neither Greek nor Jew nor Gentile, male or female. The Bible says we should always pray and not faint. Prayer is having dialogue with God. And if anybody in the church ought to pray, it ought to be the mothers of the church. Some young mother, some young sister, is watching you. And one of the things and one of the spiritual characteristics that they ought to be able to identify in you is the characteristic of prayer. So be powerful, be prayerful. But then lastly, I would charge you to persevere. Uh, the Bible in Revelations 2.10 says, Fear none of those things which thou shall suffer. The devil shall cast some of you into prison for ten days. But be thou faithful unto death. And I will give you the crown of eternal life. I used to preach revival at the Kilgo Baptist Church there in Kilgo, Texas. And there was a sister, Sister Joan, who lived to be about 103 years of age. And every time Dr. Wakely called on her, give testimony during revival she would share 
a testimony about how the Lord had brought her from a mighty long ways. And at the end of the testimony, she would always say, Pastor Winkley, I don't want to rust out, I want to wear out. And if you persevere, how do I persevere? I hold on to the bloodstained banner. I keep my faith anchored in Jesus Christ. And as the saints of old used to say, you have to run on to see what the end is going to be. So as you embark upon this new season of, of motherhood in the church, remember to be powerful. Remember to be prayerful. And remember to always persevere in Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask the members of the church if you would stand and I will give you the charge. Mount Nebo Baptist Church, we have presented to you the mothers of our church today. And it is my duty to charge you. And the first charge that I would give to you is to be respectful. Amen. 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 As we move around this sanctuary as we enter to worship and depart to serve remember that these are the mothers of the church and let us respect them as mothers of the church let us watch our language in their presence let us watch our character and our behavior in their presence but not only do I charge you to be respectful. I charge you to be righteous Amen. in their presence. What do I mean by Amen. being righteous? To be righteous is to be right with God. Amen. Old folk used to say, get right with God and do it now. Amen. So we want you to be respectful. We want you to be righteous. But then thirdly, we want you to reward them. How do I reward one of the mothers of the church? By heaping upon them words of praise. Always remind them that they have been the trendsetters and they have been the trailblazers who have paved the way. Reward them with a hug. Reward them with a kiss. And even reward them with a tangible gift from time to time. To God be the glory for the great things he has done. Mother Patton turned 100 years of age. This year she's not present. They couldn't be with us, but she's watching us via the internet. And we want to uh, make her an honorary mother of the church. When you live to be a hundred years old, you can be honorary anything. Amen. Then the second thing I want to do, Mother Fanny Cheney, where are you? Raise your hand. Mother Fanny Cheney. Mother Fanny Cheney, when I came to this church, worked very closely with Mother Juanita Jackson. And she's been faithful to the mother's board even during a period of inactivity. She's always carried herself uh, in a very uh, holy and sacred way. And so we want to heap honor upon you today by announcing to the church that you are the president of the mother's board. didn't want to make an official mother because all of them could be official mothers. And so, but I wanted to appoint her as the president. And Joyce Burton, raise your hand. <laughs> Amen. Joyce is our church songbird. But she's faithful. 
She's faithful. She's supportive. And Joyce, I want to appoint you as the vice president of the Mother's Day. I'm going to ask our ministers in training to come now. With your oil, they will anoint. Reverend Sandra Baker, will you assist me? I want Reverend Baker to pray over my mother. Amen. In the 23rd Psalms, we read where David said, He anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. They put little David under the oil, and the oil began to run. Please, ministers, will you anoint at this time? strong God. How we honor you today. We say thank you. Oh God, we say thank you. We thank you for the angel of this house. We thank you for the vision that you've given him for this house. We thank you for this moment in time that he has allowed for this consecration to take place. So now, God, we pray for each mother. God, we pray that you would stir up in them to be charged with power, that your Holy Ghost would rest on them heavy, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. That your power would arrest them that as they continue God to walk faithfully before your people God we pray now that as they continue to be prayer warriors that you will continue God to allow them to persevere and as they walk into this new calling they need you God they need you to order their steps. They need you, God, to deposit wisdom in the lives of your people. So, God, we pray now that you will continue to keep them deep in your word. That they will speak truth with power. That they will continue, God, to walk hand in hand with the vision of this house. And, God, we want to say thank you. Oh, God, we want to say thank you. For you have done a new thing in the Mount Nebo Church. You've made history today by allowing those who have saw the light of your salvation to walk worthy before your people. So we declare today that these are Titus two women, women that will pour in wisdom, wisdom that will teach young women how to take care of their husband, how to take care of their homes, that they will walk before them, God, according to your word. And then, God, we pray for Mount Nebo, that we will honor them, that we will respect them, that we will reward them, and that we will walk righteously before them. We thank you for all things, and we celebrate you, for you are God and God alone. And we say hallelujah and amen. Come on and give God praise in this place.
hand out gifts right now to the mothers. The certificate of consecration reads as follows. Having been chosen as one who has gained a reputation as a mature, respectable, and holy woman, because of your years of faithfulness, loyalty, and devotion to God, his work, his people, and your family, as a praying woman guided by the word of God, Titus 2, 4, and 5 reads, Praying the younger women to love their husbands and their children, to live wisely and be pure, to work in their homes to do good, and to be submissive to their husbands. Then they will not bring shame on the word of God. You are hereby publicly consecrated and set apart to do the work of the ministry. Congratulations, mothers of the Mount Nebo Baptist Church. Amen. just want to say inside each of these bags the mothers are receiving an engraved prayer cloth my Nebo Baptist Church church mother
right, it's giving time. Hey, I said it's giving time. I'm going to ask you to rest on your feet as we prepare to worship the Lord with our tithe and offerings. Question raised, will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But you say we're in hell, we rob thee in tithe and in offerings. You're cursed with a curse. You rob me, even this whole nation. Bring you all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house. Prove me now, hear what said the Lord of hosts. And I'll open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there won't be room enough to receive it. God loves a cheerful giving, not one to give it grudgingly. You can't be God given, no matter how hard you try, because the more you give to him, the more he will give back to you. Good measures, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. I'm going to give Elder Young and others a chance to bring the communion table back to its proper place. two tables that are always sit in the Lord's house. That's the Lord's supper table and the offering table. Amen. Those of you who are watching us online, if you care to give electronically, you can do so by going to givelify.com and looking up Mount Nebo Baptist Church. 1883 Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard, New York, New York, 10026. Or you can zell your offering to mtneboh at aol.com. Or you can mail your donations to Mount Nebo Baptist Church again. That address is 1883 Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard, New York, New York, 10026. Members living in the surrounding area, if you'd like to drop your tithe and offers off by the church, you can do so Tuesday through Friday between the hours of 5 and 9. Amen. Amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you thank for you, the Lord. gifts and the givers. We pray that they be used for the purpose of which they will be received. The building up of your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say Amen. Amen. All right, under the direction of the ushers, you can come around and bring your gifts.
all standing. All things come from thee, O Lord, and of thine own as we give unto thee. All things come from thee, O Lord, and of thine own as we give Amen. It's preaching time. Let me say it one more time because some of y'all missed it. I said it's preaching time. And as we celebrate our 85th church anniversary, I am so deliciously proud and honored to introduce our anniversary preacher today. He really needs no introduction here at Mount Nebo or anywhere in New York City or the Empire State uh, because he has distinguished himself as one of the leading pastors in the great state of New York. Amen. Amen. He began his ministry in the Garden State of New Jersey under the leadership of his late father, uh, who was a pioneer in ministry, and his mother was one of the pillars of the church, and uh, they deposited their faith in this brother, and uh, the rest is history. I trust that you have read his lengthy bio when he opened the program and saw his bio. He said, uh, Frat, please don't read all of that. Amen. I said, that's why we printed it. So the people will have the luxury and the privilege of reading it and learning more about him. Uh, but there are several things that I really admire about uh, his ministry. Let me just, uh, in the onset, say that he's a member of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. So let's give him a hand for that. Oh, that was weak, y'all. That was weak, y'all. All right, that's a little bit better. I ain't satisfied with it, but, but that's okay. Uh, but one of the, the characteristics that I admire in him is his business acumen. And he and I, we, we laughingly tell preachers across the country that uh, we are bivocational pastors. That means that we not only pastor church, but we run businesses. We have uh, a career uh, outside of the church. Uh, and I, I like for people to know that uh, because uh, when you read the Bible, Paul was not only a preacher, but Paul was a tent maker. It takes some preachers all week to get their sermons together, you know. Uh, but God sometimes has developed us in such a way uh, that uh, we can not only do things throughout the week, but we can also get ready for Sunday morning. He's a prepared preacher. You can look in the, the bio. He's academically trained. And uh, he pastors two churches. He pastors a church in Edison, New Jersey. And uh, he also pastors the campus at the Friendship Worship Center in Mount Vernon. Uh, Dr. C.W. Clark used to say one of the best ways to present a preacher is to put him up. And so I want to go ahead and put this preacher up, this powerful prolific man of God. He is the presiding national prelate for the free will Baptist worldwide. Somebody missed that. Y'all not saying nothing. Just in case you don't know what that means, that's a, those of you who are active members in the National Baptist Convention, that's equivalent to the presidency of the National Baptist. So the free will Baptists around the United States and around the world 
they look to him as their presiding prelate. And so let's honor him with a thunderous hand clap of praise. After the choir has come with the next selection, the next voice you will hear will be that of my preaching brother, Bishop Colley Nathan Edwards. Hear ye him. Hallelujah. 
Come on, flow. come to distract us for hearing what you have to say for he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the church and God we give you praise we give you glory in the midst of the challenges of life you're still good in Jesus name come on in Jesus name we praise the name of Jesus and all God's people say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. You may be seated. I am deeply humbled by my beloved friend and fraternal brother, Pastor Johnny Green. He has much has been dropped into his hands and he has been able to navigate all that God has entrusted in his hands you know God when God trusts you he knows you can get the work done a lot of people look from the bleachers and watch things happen but there's a few people, few persons who go on the field and make things happen. Right, 
Johnny Green is a foot soldier, and we're grateful. I am also, I am so blessed to be at Mount Nemo, and then to see what has transpired today, which is rememberable and historic to see these ladies who've been set aside. Yes. Now the reason why it's very historical and memorable because there is no institution in the United States of America like African Americans or black church. That, 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 listen to me, that we determine our leaders. We develop our leaders. We entrust them with the cares and souls of our spirituality. So you ladies are among others who have preceded you, some who's in the silent city. And you stand on their shoulders to make sure that the perpetual care of the ministry of Mount Nemo continues to stay in the vein of what the organizers intended it to be. What an honor. Mothers give birth. And you are expected as a mother as you give birth is to grow the church. The worst thing you can have is a mother's boy that is contrary and cantankerous. The worst thing you can have a a prayerless mother. Somebody pray for me. Had me on their mind took the time to pray for me. I just, I'm just dumb enough to believe my mama prayed for me. Anybody believe that your mama prayed for you? And some stuff you got into is her prayer that got you out of. And some stuff you could have got in, but her prayer stopped you. If there anybody in this church know that prayer works, why don't you look at somebody while you're at your mask on and tell them prayer works. My attention is drawn to a passage of scripture that I want to read in your hearings on this 85th anniversary. It is born out of the writings of Luke, the physician, who records what he heard, not what he saw, but what he heard in his second writings, Acts of the Apostles. It is the eighth chapter. It is the eighth chapter. We shall spend at least four of these verses in your hearing. And uh, I want to read what it says. Saul, reading from the New Living Translation, Saul heartily approved of Stephen's death. And on that day, a great and a rentless persecution broke out, broke out against the church in Jerusalem. And the believers were all scattered throughout the region of Judea and Samaria, except for the apostles. Some devout, some devout men buried Stephen's and greatly moaned greatly over him, expressing a personal sense of loss. For Saul being raving the church and assaulting believers into houses after houses and drunk out men and women and put them in prison. Mm -hmm. Now those believers, now those believers, now those believers who had been scattered went from place to place preaching the word and the good news of salvation. Now those believers who were scattered kept on preaching. This morning, I want to talk to you from this subject, the relentlessness of, a, of the church or the power of, a, of, a, of a perseverance, the power of perseverance, of moving the power, the, 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 resent, the church, the resilience of the church, the resilience of the church and the power of perseverance. I want to step back for a moment because we are living in some challenging times. 
these town these times are more challenging than uh, perhaps other generations had to experience because none of them had to experience what we've had just endure for the past uh, two and a half years without notice COVID-19 emerge and when it emerge it calls us to become displaced it, it calls many of us to operate in doubt not knowing it, it, it calls us to quarantine we were evicted from the church we were we were told to stay in houses our own home we were, we were told to wear our masks we were told to have social distance and this was the new norm and even as we are emerging out of it we're still confused some say wear the mask and some say don't wear the mask uh -huh. some say wear it on a plane but you can't wear it in the airport so we are confused we still have this level of suspicion we, we, they said that there is a new variant out there so we're always wondering do you have it do you have it should I sit next to you? Should I shake your hand? There's always that hesitation. But I want you to know there's power in perseverance. I need you to help me for a moment and say, neighbor, neighbor. we're going to get through this. And, and we, don't, we don't know what we're going to get through because every day is something different. It ain't, it ain't this thing, it's another thing. But whatever is thrown at us, we're going to get through it. The people of, of faith are resilient. The people of faith are anchored in knowing that he may not come when, he, when we think he ought to come. But he's always on time. Whatever time God shows up, it's the right time. And God is about to do some extraordinary things in all of our lives. This is not the first time that the church has been under attack. The attack that we're experiencing now is an unknown virus. We don't know whether it was of human origin, made in a laboratory, or just emerge but it was an attack and there were some who succumbed to the attack but this is not the first time that we have been under attack nor is the first time that the church has been under attack I want, I want, I want, I want to just give you just a brief uh, survey of the historical uh, uh, progression of the church in the first chapter of Acts, uh, Jesus now the resurrected Christ. Well, last week we celebrated the resurrection. The angelic beings came and said, he's not here. I know who you seek, but he's not here. He, he has risen. At, in other words, Jesus kept his word. And for, for, for many days, Jesus appeared among the disciples. They were gathering. He, he appears. But this is the final audience that Jesus had and the final command that he gives those whom he left behind. He said they were not to leave Jerusalem, but they were to wait. They were to wait for the Deuteros, the Exousia, the the Deuteros was the dynamite. The Exousios was the, was the authority that was given to them until they be endowed with power. Ye shall receive the Holy Ghost. You know, that the, there are some people who dismiss the, the Holy Ghost, but the Holy Ghost is the third person of the triune God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, co-equal, co-existent, and co-eternal. God the Father is the God of creation. God the Son is the Son of redemption 
and the spirit is of regeneration. And he says that you need the embodiment of the Holy Ghost. Now, I know that's not uh, very fashionable to talk about the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. But if you're going to have this level of perseverance, you got to have something that's going to give you the power to get through it. Your cleverness, how wise you may be, how smart you may be, your network can't get you through this. You need the Holy Ghost. I know some of you are smart and bright and brilliant, and we part of some of the wonderful fraternities, sororities, but all of that can't do what the Holy Ghost can do. And Jesus understood that they needed this because he knew that persecution would come against the church. They were told to, they were given the promise in chapter number one, but then in chapter number two, they have now the fulfillment of the promise. For in Acts 2 and 1 said, on the day when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were in one place on one accord. And suddenly, I said suddenly, there, there came like a sound of a mighty rushing wind. And the text said, it filled the house. And they began to speak in other languages. They needed the power. And this power of the Holy Spirit allowed Peter to stand up boldly and preach. And 3,000 people joined the church. The, the same Peter that denied him, the same Peter who had, who had anger management problems with the power of the Holy Ghost, he, he's transformed into what God wanted him to be transformed. And God used this new transformed person. I want you to know, don't you ever dismiss people and say they will never be anything because where you start is not an indication of where you're going to end. Does anybody here know that where you start is not an indication where you're going to end? If God be for us, why don't y'all talk to me? Who can be against me. I may be a drunk. I may be an addict. I may be a trickster. I may have started out in an abusive family and relationship, but don't you write me off. Goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. God is on my side. How many of you can testify that the Lord is on my side? We live in troubled time. It seems like the sun won't shine. But when will you realize that God is on your side? He hides us in his arms and protects us from our harm. Do you realize that God, I wish I had somebody in here, know that God is on my side? One and two is very pivotal. It is essential for what the church will endure. Mm -hmm. Chapter three, Paul and Silas went up to the temple at the hour of prayer. There was a man who was there laying and begging. Because Peter said, look on us. Silver and gold have we none, but such as we have in the name of Jesus. Rise up. And walk. it takes the power of persistency to continue to move forward in the midst of opposition. They now will experience opposition. They will have internal opposition. Where Ananias and Sapphira will lie against the Holy Ghost. It, it, it was, it was, it was, it was internal cleansing and you don't have to clean people. Let God, let, let, let God clean them. Stop being a detective and think it's your right to spy on people because all of us have our own flaws. 
And truth be told, if, you, if we were able to follow you home and see the real you, some of us would be surprised of how some people think that they are so spiritual minded that but they know heavenly, no earthly good. There is the cleansing because this is the internal cleansing that's happening because the church must be resilient. The church must have the power of perseverance. And when we speak of resiliency and we speak of perseverance, we talked about the church have the ability to recover from adverse circumstances. We've had some misfortunes during this era. Churches have abruptly lost their leaders. We lost some people who have sat next to us. Do you not realize, Brother Pastor, that I've lost my leadership? My head mother and my head deacon was in church when the pandemic broke out. But before the end of the pandemic, they made transition. And they didn't have health issues. It's just that this virus came unexpected and unannounced and took some of the best among us. But yet, we still will persevere. Don't like how, I wish you help me, don't like how I feel, don't like what happened, but I still know that God is in charge. I had to pace the floor. I had to pull my hair out. I had more questions than answers, but I always knew that the Lord gives. And the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I owe him a praise in the midst of opposition, in the midst of sadness, in the midst of sorrow. Don't like how to feel, don't understand it, but I'm going to press. So in chapter number eight, Saul thought was his right to persecute the church. He thought it was his right to preserve traditionalism and cultures that had been outdated. Certain things that we should have learned in this pandemic is that there are some traditions we must let go. See, we put more value in brick and mortar. We, we put more value than my mama bought that seat. That we helped to pay the last dollar to burn the mortgage. But God showed us that the church was not a building. Because many days I was in the church preaching, but I was preaching to pews and talking to a camera. But the church was in their homes. This, this, this what this teach us that the church is in the home. Did you hear me? And so Saul thought it was his right to persecute the church. But God moves in persecution. You, you, you don't understand because you take your finiteness and try to understand an infant God. And oftentimes we say to ourselves, how cruel that is that this happened and God never intervened and stop it from happening but God has a plan and nothing happened by accident or by chance because brothers and sisters God is sovereign and the sovereignty of God means that there's nothing that's above God when you ever think of God you can't imagine anything greater than God see God is God I want you to catch this. God is God. And because God is God, he's self-existent. He exists within himself. 
And because he's self-existent, he's self-contained. Which means God is not restricted to the parameters of time, space, and matter. God can work outside of time and then step in time and work and then step out of time because he's God. Did you hear me? And so God now allow persecution to happen. And now they are being persecuted. This man is persecuting them. And this text in chapter number 8 verses 1 through 4 teaches us three principles and I'm through. It teaches us that persecution does not mean defeat. It may be it may be delayed but it's not denied. Look at your neighbor and say neighbor persecution does not mean defeat because we're gonna get through this no matter how it feels oh bless God I feel it now I'm gonna get through it because where I am in this persecuted state doesn't mean that I am defeated because I'm more than a conqueror I can do all things through Christ that give me the strength. Right now, do it again. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, persecution does not mean defeat. And then secondly, this text says that God uses persecution to push us out of our comfort zone. The church in Jerusalem was inward focused when it should have been outward focused. Jesus told them to go into all the world and to preach and teach the gospel. But they decided to stay in Jerusalem. They became fat. They became complacent and satisfied. And the worst thing can ever happen to a church, an organized church like Mike Nemo, is that when you become complacent and satisfied, because God is not through with me yet. You ought to tell somebody, God is not through with me yet. I'm comfortable, but God sometimes allows sorrow and allow sickness and allow pain to cause you to move from your comfort zone. And I don't know about you, I'm so glad that I've had some weary days. I'm so glad I've had some bad days. Yes, I had some good days, but when I think things all over, all of my good days, I wish I had a church in here. I'll wait my bad days. I must complain. God was pushing them out of their comfort zone. And God is pushing somebody out of your comfort zone. He's giving you vision and yet you have allowed them to allow dormant it. But I come to tell my Nemo, get up. Look at somebody and say, get up. Get up and do something. Tell your neighbor, get on up and do something before God push you out of your comfort zone. And then finally, God is always, he always arrives in the midst of our persecution. And when God arrives, he gives us joy. I don't know about you, but every day I get up, I tell the Lord, thank him. I tell him, I said, Jesus, you woke me up this morning. You started me on my way. Jesus, I want to thank you for having the spirit of perseverance. I heard 
what Paul said to the church of Philippi. He was in house arrest. He said, I am forgetting those things which are behind me. I'm reaching far for those things which are before me. I'm going to press. Look at your neighbor and say, press. Press. Oh, press. In the midst of a sickness, press. In the midst of sadness, press. In the midst of a storm, press. Press. God will take care of you beneath his wing of love divine. God will take care of you. If there ain't anybody here that knows he will, if you know he will, say yeah. Yes. Oh. Oh. Won't he do it? I said, won't he do it? Won't he make a way out of nowhere? You know, we are the call and respond, church. Won't he hear you? Won't he fix it? Is he a doctor in the courtroom? What's wrong with Jesus? All right. Oh. Oh. Oh! 
Oh, oh, oh. oh this is a Baptist church. We Baptists. He gave me. Yeah, I love them. Come on.
Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody, lift those hands high. Come on, lift them high. Come on, lift them high. Somebody shout to God. Be the glory. Come on, church. To God be the glory. To God be the glory for the things He has done. Come on, one more time. To God. Come on, church. Be the glory to God. Be the glory to God. Be the glory for the thing He has done. Come on, church. Come on, church. I said, come on, church. Praise him. Just a little while longer. Just a little while longer. I want to I wanna use this moment as a platform to extend the invitation Christian discipleship. We've heard some good preaching here today. Some Holy Ghost anointed preaching took place here today. Uh, this is now for those of you who may not know, this is this is a Pentecostal moment. Preacher, what's a Pentecostal moment? I'm glad y'all are asking. When the Holy Ghost shows up unannounced. And let me just, let me just serve notice to the traditionalists and the organized religion. The Holy Ghost doesn't need an invitation to show up. I wouldn't have a religion I couldn't feel sometimes. Woo, thank you, Bishop. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Letting the oil flow. Been some anointing going on in here today. Look at your neighbor and tell him there's been some anointing in here today. Somebody shout, the oil is flowing. I'm going to preach that. When I come back, I'm going to. I'm going to preach that. I'm, I'm going to preach that the all is flowing. God just gave me that. God just gave me that. I feel it. I, I felt it. I felt it being birthed in me. Just the all. Somebody shout the all is flowing. I told you the all is flowing. Y'all don't worry about Troy. That's oil. That's oil. I told y'all. I told you all. Don't y'all worry about Troy, y'all. Y'all stay up here. Let Troy do what he do. I told y'all, God, watch this, watch this. Johnny McCann would say, I'm, I'm under the anointing now, watch this. 
God is getting ready to break up in here. God is going to come through here. And I'm telling you, God is going to replenish. Somebody shout, restore. God is going to restore. God is, God is going to replace. God is every pew, every pew is, um, every pew is going to have a body in it, a living, a living body. It's getting ready to happen. You stay, you stay tuned. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be doing some of my best preaching in the days to come. Because there's, there's an anointing on this place. And can I tell you something? Let me tell you something. Mount Nebo, we are a favorite church. Out of all we've been through, look at us today. There, there's a, a preacher. There's a preacher in this city. He said, he said, he said, Bishop, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open the doors of the church, but I gotta, I gotta say this, because I'm a man of faith. There's a preacher in this town. He said. He said, forget about it. He said, Green, the church is never going to be what it used to be. There's a preacher in this town. And as soon as he said that, I disconnected. As soon as he said that, I, I disconnected. I turned him off. I disassociated myself. I stopped accepting his phone calls. He didn't have anything else to say to me. Because I said, you've been preaching. Have faith in God. Let me tell you something. God gets us ready for the great with the less great. You know what, before Abraham could come back down the mountain with his son Isaac, the text says, after these things, God did test Abraham. The pandemic couldn't out God, God. They tell me that, that the numbers are going down. I don't know, because folk are still in the hospital. Folk are still testing positive. Folk are still dying. But what I do know is that God is still on the throne. Everything I have, I got it with a Bible and a microphone. Mm -hmm. Did y'all hear what I said? On, Everything I have, I got with a Bible and a microphone. A Bible and a microphone. When I got in the car coming to New Jersey to go to seminary, I didn't have I didn't even have a microphone. I just had my Bible. My Lord. Somebody shout, take the book with you. Take the book with you. There were some things I couldn't, I couldn't, couldn't bring with me. I couldn't, I couldn't bring the bed from my first apartment. I couldn't bring the television set. I had a 1984 Honda Accord LX only get six boxes of books in the trunk and all my clothes on the back seat and a few boxes of books on the passenger side. But I put my Bible next to me. 
Y'all don't know where to shout. Bible was with me on Interstate 20 as I passed through East Texas and came through Shreveport, Louisiana, on up across the Mississippi River in Jackson, Mississippi. Came on up through Tuscaloosa and Birmingham. And went on up to Atlanta, crossed over into Mariana, caught 85. Came on up the eastern seaboard, Riley. Charlotte, South Carolina, Virginia, D.C. Bible still on the on the seat with me. Come on, somebody, Maryland, Delaware, Pennsylvania, and then I came across the Delaware River into New Jersey, caught one and nine, and went on up to Princeton with my Bible. With that Bible, I left Princeton and came on to Elizabeth. Stayed there almost 17 years. And then with that Bible, I came across the Hudson. And here I am, 16 years later. Take this book with you. I'm going to open the doors of the church. We've been doing it for 85 years. And for 85 years, the Lord has been blessing this church. We are a favored church. Somebody shout, we are a favored church. Nothing can stop us. We are a favored church. Nothing can keep us from growing exponentially. We're on our way up. We're on our way. We're going higher. We're going higher. Thank you, Bishop for reminding us of the resilience of a persevering church. That sermon is going to live with me to the end. There are some sermons that just stay with me. The resilience of a persevering church. No matter what we go through, we can make it. No matter how many pandemics come our way. We can make it. 52 Sundays I sit in front of a camera in my personal study and gave you the word of God. And I stayed in that study and in front of that iPad until I could take it no more. And I said, I'm coming back to church. And I came here, Bishop. It was me and two or three deacons. I preached I preached as hard as I could preach and I said to myself if you can't preach to an empty church you can't preach, preach to a full church and look at us now look at us look at us look at us and this is only the beginning this is only the beginning if you're, if you're here today and you're unchurched, out of the ark of safety, never said yes to Jesus. And you want to receive him as Lord and Savior. Just tell him, I yield, I yield, I can't hold out. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Christ from the dead, you shall be saved. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you want to join today, if you want to be restored today, the 85th church anniversary is a good day to join the church. This is a mild marker. This is a memorable moment. Today is a memorable moment. It's a memorable moment. The 85th church anniversary. This will be a good starting time for you. Come on right now. Come on right now while the blood is running warm in your veins. Come on right now. While you still have your mental faculties and you can make your own decisions. You can pick and choose your own praying ground. Come on right now and join Jesus and join Mount Nebo. Do we have one who will come? Surrender. Come on, everybody. All to Jesus. All to Jesus. 
before your throne of grace, mercy, and goodness. We lift up our brother, Walter Sumter. And we ask you, in the name of Jesus, to cover him in your blood. Whatever the enemy is plotting against him right now, I pray that the enemy's plans be forfeited. I pray that you would give him supernatural strength. Strengthen him where he's weak. Build him up where he's torn down. Right now, Lord, give him strength in his legs. Right now, Lord, give him proper breathing. Right now, Lord, make his heart stronger. But running in his feet, clapping in his hand, enjoying his heart. Lord, that sorrow that has gripped his heart since the senseless killing of his son, I ask you to remove it right now and replace it with your joy. And let him know the joy of the Lord is his strength. In Jesus' name I pray. And all the people said amen. Put your hands together and praise God all over the building. When the Lord puts somebody on my spirit, I'm going to pray for them. Amen. We have two vehicles that um, we're asking to quickly, if you would, move those vehicles. There's an emergency that must be dealt with. Um, license plate A as an Apple T E 2734. That's A T E 2734. And our second vehicle is G K E 5392. If those vehicles belong to you, if you would as quickly as possible move them. Thank you. Let the church say amen. amen. We're going to ask that the chairperson of our, of our church anniversary will come and give directions for our closing on today, Trustee Natasha Danzer. Come on, put your hands together as she's coming. Amen, amen. Thank you, my amigo. Congratulations again on 85 years. To God be the glory for the good things he has done. I stand before you on behalf of the 85th church anniversary, but first and foremost, I do want to thank God and thank you, Pastor, for entrusting me to serve again 
as the chairwoman for the 85th church anniversary. To Reverend Baker, for your burst of energy and commitment to pure excellence. My committee, for always assisting, Reverend Johnson, Minister Akins, Minister Pam, Debbie, and Desiree, I thank you all. With Pastor's vision, amen. With Pastor's vision to focus on our music legacy here at Mount Nebo, I want to appreciate the co-chairs of the Homecoming Reunion Choir, Trustee Diana Robinson, <laughs> Madam President Jackie Henderson, who accepted to serve and your awesome committee, the outstanding job of the Reunion Choir. Come on, y'all, let's fight for them. <laughs> who consecutively came out for rehearsals. Thank you, choir. Thank you. Our comparable musicians, Minister Greg Thomas, Zuri Goldston, Darrell Lely, Tyrone Thomas, Jeremiah, and Joshua Green. Thank you all for showcasing your God-given talents. I thank you all. A special thanks to Kimberly Wiggins. Kim, would you please stand, please? Sister Kimberly Wiggins created our keepsakes journal for the reunion concert. Thank you, Kim, for your hard work and your sleepless nights. I so appreciate you. I climax for today in our consecration of our mothers. We thank God for each and every one of you and your wisdom. May God continue to bless and keep each and every one of you, and it is such an honor to have you as our mothers. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bishop Edwards, for delivering such a powerful message on this 85th church anniversary. We will continue to persevere, so thank you. I also wanted to thank Minister Taylor, Walking Deacon Kenny Mouth Almighty, and Felicia Stanley for assisting us on Saturday for assembling the gift bags. Thank you so much. Amen. Also, the gift bags, each member will receive a gift bag, which is to my left, so the committee will also distribute each gift bag to a member. Last but not least, um, Trustee Hill, Sarah Usher, and Reminsa. Thank you, our worship leader, Sarah Usher, this morning. She did an awesome guy. Master Aaron Mitzer, thank you, and Trustee Hill for the scripture. Thank you so much. Thank you, trustees, my chairwoman, Helen Simmons, for always having my back. Thank you, deacons, for setting up this morning. A pandemic that left us no choice but to get closer to God two years and celebrate this momentous 85-year celebration. How sweet and good that is. It's so sweet that each of you are going to get a chocolate keepsake commemorating our 85th church anniversary. You'll also get that as well at the end of service. Oh, here you go. I'm sorry. Thank you. You all will get a chocolate, chocolate bar. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Mamibo. Thank you, Reverend Pearson. Thank you, Reverend Gardner. Thank you, Reverend Watkins. And last but not least, our giant. Thank you, Reverend Green, for your leadership, your outstanding job. Congratulations, my Nebo. Happy 85th anniversary. Amen, amen. We have another vehicle. Um, license plate A as an Apple 95 NLD. That's A as an Apple 95 NLD, if that's your vehicle, if you would move it for us. Thank you so much. Um, let me also acknowledge, um, could you put your hands together and celebrate our choir and the directress, yeah. Sister yeah. Sharon yeah. Lemon. Yeah. 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 Amen, amen. Hey. Mount Dimbo. We are Mount Nebo strong. And we're Mount Nebo strong because we have a visionary leader who take us before the Lord in prayer every day. And God speaks to him. And because of our fellowship, we are able to do great and marvelous things. So can you celebrate the greatness of the Mount Nebo church as we bring our pastor before us?
Thank you, Sarah Usher. Give God a hand for Sarah Usher. Amen. Amen. I, I thank God for her today as our worship leader. I thank God for Reverend Baker. Say amen, amen. for her. Amen. And we thank God for our chairperson, our chair lady for the 85th church anniversary, uh, Trustee uh, Natasha Dazzler. Uh, have y'all had a good time? Bishop, I want you to know you preached up in here today. Amen. You, you let the Lord, you let the Lord use you like I knew you would. Amen. And we're grateful uh, for you uh, sharing uh, with us. I was real hesitant. Uh, I took my time in selecting the preacher. Uh, I had preachers on my mind all over the country. And... Uh, Lord wouldn't let me pull the trigger, amen. And then he deposited uh, Bishop uh, Edwards in my spirit, and I'm glad that he rearranged his schedule so he could come and share the word uh, with us today. So good to see uh, so many of our members back for the first time in two years, amen. We see you, I don't wanna get in the name calling because I'll, I'll, I'll miss you you to be upset uh, with me. Amen. But we go down from this place and I want, this is what I want to say in closing. Uh, we are a favored church. Come on. We are a favored church. And somewhere going forward on our website, uh, on everything we do, uh, I want the words we are favored church. I want that because God has favored Mount Nebo from day one to today. Amen. We could not have done it without God's faith. We're ready to go home. Ivan Bernard, are you in, in the house? He's not in the house. Okay, precious. All right. All right. All right. That's Sister Jenny Jones. This is somebody that's related. Your brother. Amen. Ivan Bernard. Let me whisper prayer for him right now. Father, we pray and lift up Ivan Bernard. He's going to have a serious surgery, a spinal surgery. He needs our prayers. And we know that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. The Bible says, if any is sick among you, let him call on the elders of the church and let them come and anoint them and lay hands on them. The effectual and fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. We thank you for Bishop Nathan Edwards. We thank you for Friendship Worship Center. We thank you for his ministry all that it means to us and all that he has poured out today we ask that you would pour back in him and now may the grace of God the love of Jesus Christ we communion of the Holy Spirit rest from the Bible with us all his form now and forevermore every heart shall say amen, amen. God bless you you are dismissed